welcome to my youtube channel so today in this video we are going to uh, see the envelope detection of the ai modulated wave so in the communication lab uh, in the last uh, experiment i have already discussed about the how to generate the ai modulated signal uh, using the square law method so in that we have already seen this circuit on multi sim and uh, we have implemented it and we have already seen its waveform okay so just for the sake of understanding uh, just i am repeating this one okay uh, this circuit we have already implemented in the last experiment so those who haven't watched that video please go to that particular video so uh, if we execute this particular uh, model uh, we have already seen that we had got this particular am modulated wave okay so this was our am modulated wave which is a conventional am so now uh, we have to demodulate the same signal okay this am modulated wave we have to demodulate okay and i uh, will be uh, demodulating this wave on multi sim using the envelope detection method okay so uh, in my uh, lecture of communication engineering i have already explained what is the envelope detection okay so those who haven't watched that video of uh, lecture okay uh, theory lecture please go to that particular video i will also be sharing the link here okay in the description box so you can go through it and you can see uh, what we mean to say the envelope detection and what is the basic circuitry however just for your understanding i am just uh, uh, sharing that uh, ppt okay so this was our ppt okay uh, in which this is our envelope detector circuit okay so this is a very simple am detector circuit in which we have one diode one capacitor and one resistor okay connected in this particular fashion okay and uh, uh, then we have to follow a certain uh, conditions uh, to avoid the diagonal clipping or you can say uh, the proper uh, detection of the envelope of am signal okay and that condition is this one okay one upon fc which is uh, much much greater than rc and then the rc should be much much lesser than one upon fm okay where fm is the uh, uh modulating signal uh, frequency okay highest frequency so this is our message signal highest frequency this is uh, carrier frequency fc okay so this condition has to be followed while designing the uh, your our envelope detector so let's see the circuit okay i have already designed this circuit on multi sim so we have this particular circuit okay so this top one is nothing but our am modulator okay this is our am modulator and then uh, here we can see this is our envelope detector this portion okay you please try to see this one okay only this portion one that one uh, diode and uh, uh, there is one capacitor and resistors which are connected parallelly okay we have taken a appropriate value of uh, capacitance and resistances okay now just you go back and uh, we have to see uh, what are the different uh, uh, means parameter of the basis signal we have taken and uh, carrier frequency that we have taken okay so if we look at uh, this is our uh, basis signal okay so basis signal frequency i had taken as uh, 200 uh, hertz fine so it is of 200 hertz and its peak amplitude i have taken as 500 millivolt okay so 200 hertz means what will be the time period of this signal we can calculate it as 1 upon 200 so that will be equals to uh, somewhere around 5 milliseconds okay so you can calculate it it is somewhere around 5 milliseconds now uh, if you look at this carrier okay the carrier that we had taken is 9.1 kilohertz okay if you remember our last experiment of am modulation so we had taken this carrier frequency equals to 9.1 kilohertz and if you calculate one upon fc okay which is the time period of the carrier signal that will be come out as 0.11 millisecond you can do this analysis okay so basically what uh, i would like to say is uh, while designing the uh, rc uh, means envelope detector okay this rc time constant of the envelope detector uh should be greater than 0.11 millisecond and it should be less than uh, much much lesser than the uh, 5 millisecond this is what our condition is okay so while following this particular condition we could be able to design an appropriate uh, envelope detector so that uh, the envelope of this uh, 
a modulated signal can be easily detected okay so let's see i have taken this uh, capacitance value as 10 nanofarad and uh, this uh, resistance load resistance value equals to 30 kilo ohms so if we multiply what will be the value so we are going to get this value i think uh, if you multiply it will be somewhere around 300 okay so 300 microfarad uh, microseconds we are going to get fine so uh, that will be equals to 0.3 uh, millisecond okay so it means that this value is greater than your 0.11 millisecond and it is much lesser than our 5 milliseconds value okay so this is the value that we have taken it is actually following the condition right so uh, now if we execute this circuit okay i'm just executing it now you can see here in this waveform okay this is our waveform so here we can see that this yellow line okay this yellow graph uh, is actually denoting the output of the envelope detector okay this yellow graph fine so uh, in this yellow graph we can see here okay easily uh, that uh, our signal okay uh, across the uh, envelope detector okay so here you can see the charging in the discharging pattern of the capacitor okay charging and discharging capacitor uh, the pattern of the capacitor and then we are getting this type of output okay so this is this yellow line is actually appearing across the uh, output of the envelope detector so here we can see that this output is actually almost able to follow uh, the envelope of this particular uh, am modulated wave for this particular uh, rc time constant okay and now the thing thing is that uh, we have given the sinusoidal signal as the masses signal okay and you must be wondering that uh, the output is not sinusoidal but it is it looks like to be a sinusoidal but there is a zigzag output okay so obviously this zigzag output is not our masses signal okay so how to obtain the masses signal uh, after the envelope detection that is the thing that we have to understand so while discussing okay in the theory part i told you uh, the output uh, will be able to follow the envelope of this particular masses signal uh, approximately and uh, it will be having certain zigzag output okay this type of zigzag output will be appearing okay in the output so this is what i am able to see here okay and this is what we are able to see okay we are going to see this zigzag output fine so this zigzag output is not our masses signal okay but uh, how to obtain the masses signal is uh, just after this envelope detector okay what we have to connect is we have to connect one appropriate low pass filter so i have already designed a low pass filter in the previous experiment okay so i have just connected the second order uh, low pass filter okay so you please go through uh, my previous lectures in which i have designed the uh, second order low pass filter so this second order low pass filter is having a sufficient 3 db cutoff frequency uh, that will be able to pass uh, 200 hertz signal okay so now we can uh, see uh, this is our output of the envelope detector this yellow line okay and here we can see this is the output of the low pass filter okay so this is the output of the low pass filter so what we can see is here uh, in the uh modulation part okay here we have given the signal like sinusoidal signal of 200 hertz frequency which is having uh, like uh, 5 uh, millisecond its uh, time period and here again we can see that at the final output we are receiving one sinusoidal wave okay and even we can measure its uh, amplitude uh, means its uh, frequency okay i told you that the frequency part is more important than its amplitude part because amplitude can be controlled by having a particular amplifier of particular gain. So here we can see that uh, this particular uh, sinusoidal wave in the output, it is having its uh, time period equals to five milliseconds. Here you can see, uh, this is the bottom part of this particular signal, okay? And this is another bottom part, okay? The consecutive bottom part. So between these two bottom parts, uh, we can see that what is its uh, time period, okay? Or even we can, uh, look at the top values okay so uh, either trough or crest can we give you this uh, time period values so we can see this bottom part 
So here you can see that uh, its, its time space is two milliseconds per division. So how many divisions it is covering? One division here, another division that is half. Okay, so it is two and two means four milliseconds, and here it is one millisecond. So it is five milliseconds. So we are exactly able to demodulate this signal using the envelope detection. So how this uh, has been obtained by using the envelope detection, a very simple circuitry, okay? So you remember that the output of any envelope detector, okay? Uh, it will be a zigzag output, okay? It will be a zigzag output. It will not be exactly the masses signal. To obtain the masses signal further, uh, we need to connect the low pass filter, appropriate low pass filter. Sometimes only uh, like uh, first order filter will be sufficient. Sometimes we need to connect the second order filter. Okay, second order low pass filter. So that you can try on, you can just uh, uh, take the different frequency values of the masses signal and you can design the, uh, like your circuitry this particular bandpass filter that we have designed for a different carrier frequencies. And then you can again redesign your low pass filter. And uh, then you can redesign your, uh, means uh, your envelope detector. And again, you can redesign your low pass filter. Uh, and then you can see that whether your signal, uh, means uh, your circuitry is able to demodulate the signal or not, okay? So I hope uh, this discussion uh, must be clear. You try to uh, obtain this envelope detector output. Okay, you try to obtain this envelope detector output. Now we can uh, again see uh, one of the concept, which is the diagonal clipping. Okay, I told you that about the diagonal clipping, whenever the RC time constant is too large, uh, the diagonal part is going to be clipped. Okay, so just you see this part, okay. Here we can see that we are going to get a purely sinusoidal wave, okay, uh, of uh, desired frequency. Whatever the message signal we have applied here, the same output we are going to get in the output of the second order low pass filter, okay? So uh, now suppose if I change this RC time constant, okay? Right now it is like uh, 0.3 milliseconds. Let us say if I make it uh, large, okay? Uh, so let us suppose that I am just increasing it, okay? Let us say I just make it 100 kilo ohms, what happens, okay? So try to see this one. If I make it 100 kilo ohms, then this RC time constant is now increasing, okay? So when it is increasing, you can see that now it is becoming uh, like 1000 microseconds means it is almost one millisecond now, okay? So if you see that if it is one millisecond, okay, it's still it is less than five millisecond, but you remember that we need RC time constant, which should be much, much lesser than five milliseconds, okay? It should be much, much lesser than five milliseconds. So here we can see that uh, this one millisecond is not that much less, okay? So when we do it, okay, when we execute this one, here you can observe the waveform, okay? Here you can observe the waveform. So this part is now, this part is now clipped, okay? This part is clipping, okay? Which is nothing but our diagonal clipping. And the same output uh, character, you can also observe in the final output, okay? Here you can see that now the output is no more sinusoidal signal but it is having a diagonal which is clipped, okay? So this diagonal information is now clipped, okay? Because of uh, time constant is becoming too large, okay? If you further increase it, okay? If you further increase it, you can further analyze this particular output, okay? Let us say if I make it uh, 200, then try to see this output again. If I make it 200 kilo ohms, then uh, you will be able to see this waveform again. So you can see here, okay, a large amount of uh, diagonal part is clipping, okay? So this is our diagonal clipping concept. Beautiful output now you can see in this particular experiment. So I hope this experiment must be clear. So please try to do this experiment by your own, implement the circuit. And I appreciate all the viewers if uh, uh, they can change the carrier frequency, okay? carrier frequency, for example, in this case, I have taken 9.1 kilohertz as the uh, carrier frequency, and I have just chosen this uh, uh, masses frequency equals to 200 hertz, okay? So I appreciate all the viewers if they can uh, make a little change. For example, you can make this uh, uh, carrier frequency like 20 kilohertz, okay? You can try to increase this one also 
our uh, message frequency. And then you can uh, redesign this band pass filter by following my all previous lectures. And then uh, you can redesign our envelope detector. Okay, and then a particular low pass filter has to be designed to get the output. Okay, so I hope this uh, discussion, this experiment you must have enjoyed. So please implement it and uh, try to enjoy this uh, video. Okay, uh, by seeing this envelope detector output and also observing the diagonal clipping in this very simple experiment. So thank you for watching. If you have any uh, comment, any doubt regarding this experiment, then you can please uh, put your all the queries in the comment box. So thank you for watching. Please stay connected with this channel for more updates. Thank you.